There's nothing quite like a refreshing glass of water, but could your water glass be contaminated with chemicals that you can't even see? So a new study by the Environmental Working Group found that potentially harmful chemicals known as PFAS may be present in our water at a much higher rate than previously estimated. And what they did here in the study is they tested tap water from 44 places, 31 different states, as well as the District of Columbia. Only one location came back with no detectable PFAS. Now, why do we care? Studies have indicated these chemicals may increase cholesterol levels, might weaken the immune system. So what should we do? Well, joining our conversation via Skype is toxicologist Dr. Noreen Khan Mayberry. So Dr. Noreen, here's the reality. We always worry about safe drinking water. We worry about a lot of different things, including lead, but now we have to worry about other chemicals we've never really heard of. Should we be concerned about these findings? Well, absolutely, because um, PFAS are um, chemicals that just don't go away. Plastics don't break down in the environment, and they are so prevalent, they're so widespread, and the EPA has known about these chemicals in our water since around 2001. So it's great that we have a group that's actually coming back and saying, hey, let's test the water, let's find out what's there. As a matter of fact, PFAS is so prevalent that um, we just accept that every single person in the United States has some amount of PFAS in their system. So Dr. Noreen, obviously you're referring to these as forever chemicals. Why do they last forever and, and how worried should we be about them in our daily lives? So the reason that we call them forever chemicals is because these plastics just don't break down. Um, you know, unfortunately, there are chemicals that can be easily remediated or removed from the environment. PFAS, these just aren't them. They do not break down. And we easily uptake them in our water and our food. And so we get exposed to them on a daily basis. And PFAS exposure has been um, uh, blamed for thyroid problems, for cancer, for liver problems for some of the medical issues that you uh, talked about earlier. So it's not something that we should ignore because it's so prevalent and we've already been exposed to it. We actually are able to have this knowledge and take steps to actually reduce our exposures. How does it get into our water? Firefighting foam is used all over the country. And generally, after firefighting foam is used, it's not disposed of properly. It gets into the water drainage system, and then it in turn gets into the water. Well, according to that map, the place to be is Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, high quality H2O. But Noreen, I mean, along the lines of the runoff of the foam used for fires, but I mean, I'm sure that part of it is just waste dumps as well, that those huge stockpiles of, of plastics and byproducts are sitting there. Uh, they have to also get into the water table. They absolutely do get into the water table. It's just that when you're thinking about the most uh, common um, source, it would be the firefighting foam. But there's also people that have actually um, dumped on purpose. You know, they should not have dumped or they were careless and they were lazy, like you're saying, with the, the waste that they have. They did not isolate it. And some people just, you know, they, they have this, well, I didn't know it was a problem, but it is something that we really should be concerned about because of the long-term issues, the potential for getting um, chronic disease, uh, thyroid issues for cancers. That's why we should not ignore this and not say, oh my gosh, another chemical. Um, we really should take action to protect ourselves from being exposed to these chemicals. 